episode 19 of my all-wheel drive Mustang project, Project Traction. Uh, a lot of progress this month, uh, basically concentrating on the oil pan. But kind of like the last video where to get to the oil pan I had to figure out CV joints. Uh, this time to get to the oil pan I had to figure out rack and pinion and clearance and how that all interacted. So that's the focus of this video. Once again, a lot to cover, so let's get right into it. My mission was to design the whole oil pan modification uh, the, and the jack shaft and the bearing and all the parts for it in CAD. And so I really wanted a solid model or a CAD model of the differential. So I had the, the, diff, uh, the Toyota differential that I'm using scanned and to create this, which is uh, basically the raw STL file that imperfection on the front there, that's where we actually had it mounted to a stand and we couldn't get a good scan around there. Uh, but it's kind of funny, you can even see the paper towel I shoved in there to uh, keep the uh, the spray out of the uh, differential. We had to spray it with a powder to get a good scan. Uh, but I was very impressed with this. Uh, the only problem is it creates a really huge file which uh, has to be addressed before it can be brought into CAD. The STL file was then simplified before bringing it in the CAD. As you can see, the model is much more faceted. Uh, you lose some details, but it allows it to be much easier to manipulate in CAD and easier to work with. Datums and axes were then added to get it square and have a frame of reference when making parts like the CV joints and the jack shaft to make sure everything was in its proper position. You can see the sketches in blue there that were added to represent the flanges for the cover and for the cross tube. Finally some solid features and a series of cuts uh, were added to represent the modifications required to the differential to fit in the car. Basically I machined about a quarter inch off the face here and um, and then took another six hundred thousandths to make a step in there to clear the rail where the oil pan bolts to and then there's basically uh, the original seal bore is going to receive a spigot or a pilot that'll allow it to interface with the oil pan and here's the model of the final concept anyways um, so after the differential is modified a aluminum piece um, the, the red part on the screen will get pressed in and have a little o-ring groove right there to seal uh, into the oil pan for the, the gear oil. The gold part represents my rough concept for a much more compact differential cover. Uh, it's not quite complete yet. Uh, it still needs the, uh, the fill plug and the, it's going to be a breather on that surface right there. But it's, uh, as already mentioned, it's much more compact than the factory unit. And that little divot there is actually to clear the AC compressor. Between all these changes, it allowed me to move the differential, at least in the CAD model, five eighths of an inch farther forward in the car, which will dramatically help my CV axle angles. And here's the complete assembly. I found this CAD model of the Coyote block in oil pan um, on, on the internet, basically, and downloaded it, and it was really a lifesaver, uh, especially with my attempt to get the differential as far forward as possible. I did simplify it and delete a bunch of things in the model to make it easier to control here. But you can see there's my differential assembly and I made two dummy CV joints to kind of represent the, the modified CV joints I showed in the last um, video. And here you can see the start of the jack shaft and how it's going to go through the oil pan. So basically the green part is the jack shaft, the red part is that spigot I just showed which basically gets um, piloted into a steel part um, which is welded to the tube here and that is all then welded to the oil pan and the shaft goes through it. And on the right hand side which is the driver's side is a seal to keep the oil in or the gear oil and then a bearing to support it. As you can see here the, the jack shaft is kind of extends out past the bearing. It's kind of cantilevered and I'm going to go into that in more detail later but basically that allows way more clearance for the rack and pinion which is the next challenge of the project is how to get the rack and pinion and the steering shaft to clear all this. Um, that was a stumbling block a couple of years ago and 
had a little breakthrough when I looked at a, the, the newer Kia Stinger shafts are like this. The, the all-wheel drive Stingers have the jack shaft just like this for the same reason, where the jack shaft sticks out way past the bearing. The bearing is close to the oil pan, and it's kind of cantilevered out there to get more clearance. Now to go from the CAD world to the real world, I needed a way to be able to transfer the axis of the, of the jack shaft onto the oil pan. So I modeled up and then proceeded to 3D print these jigs which bolt on to the oil pan using those two bolts as a datum structure and then it allows, there's two holes in them, it allows you to basically put a drill bit or a transfer punch into them to then mark the oil pan to drill the hole and that was my best way of transferring all of this CAD data to the real world and getting an accurate uh, hole in the oil pan. So here's the 3D printed jig I showed in the CAD model which then locates um, off of these two oil pan holes or bolts I should say I guess um, and bolts down and then I can put a, either just an actual drill bit through here a quarter inch or use a center punch to get through to mark the oil pan and this you know I've, it's got two bosses on it so I can use it on the other side these uh, uh, according to the CAD model these bolts are the same on both sides right so I can just drill but uh, anyways and then I'm gonna put a piece of for the first mock-up just put a piece of quarter inch rod through it and put it back in the car to kind of get a sense of where everything is but so this is my way of trying to drill the take the CAD model and using like the back block back of the block as a reference is how can I drill this hole accurately on both sides and this was my solution and so once I drill a quarter inch pilot hole um, I can then take a hole saw to drill you know to make it the actual hole and it should be square to the block is the idea So here's the idea. So this is just some quarter inch rod that I beveled here. And now I can shove this through the pilot holes and hopefully find the other side. There we go. And now I can bolt this back in the car and kind of get a sense of where everything is and kind of make sure my CAD model was correct. And then also um, I 3D printed kind of a, a practice bearing holder here, uh, which will be on this side. And um, I wanna try to figure out how long this should be. Uh, and I realized I needed to figure that out in the car, not in CAD, because it's gotta clear the rack and pinion. So I'm gonna machine a spud here um, and I'm printing the cap 
so that I can basically put it on this rod and slide it back and forth and see how it clears the rack and pinion before um, committing to putting the big hole in here, the actual inch and three eighths or even larger hole that you really can't you know, back out from, if you will, without starting over again. And so that's the next step. Put all this back in the car and go from there. Before I could put all this back in the car and mock up the driver's side uh, CV joint bearing system with the rack and pinion, I had to do a few more cuts to the cross member. As you can see, I'm using a delicate instrument and sneaking up on it a few thou at a time. No, in all seriousness, this is just clearance and it'll be cut back a little bit more precisely later on. Here is the clearance I've already added for the front diff um, and the passenger side CV joint. One other potential issue is how to get the front rack to fit in the car. And I've mentioned a few times it's going to have to be moved forward. Um, you know, I just showed the modifications here to the front cross member. You can see the diff wants to be in the same spot as one of the mounts even. But what's worse than that, or what's a bigger issue actually, is the um, kind of bulbous section here um, where the belt is inside here. If you don't realize, this is electronic or electric rack and pinion. This is the control module, there's a circuit board in here, then there's actually a motor in here. Then inside here, there's actually a belt that goes from the motor over to a ball screw that actually is your um, your power steering, right? And then inside here, there's a encoder and a torque sensor to kind of let you know how much torque you're putting on it, analogous to the spool valve in a hydraulic uh, power steering. And so a couple of issues um, for making the front diff fit um, in the cross shaft is this here is really fat and is right where the diff is. And so um, this is just a cover. I've had it off already and you can see the belt and it maybe it's just a little seal here, but it doesn't hold any liquid in or anything. But um, I might chop off one of these ears. We'll see. And then the other option and what I, or the other problem and what I'm trying to mock up right now with the oil pan and the little um, rod through the middle and everything is getting this to clear the cross shaft, you know, where the other CV joint is. Um, this is in the stock location is basically exactly where the axle has to go through. And so up until about a month ago or a month and a half ago, I was thinking I had to make this go on top or over the um, cross shaft. And now I've had the revelation that it should really go below. And so I'm going to basically have to lean the rack this way, um, which helps a few things. Um, but this huge bulbous thing here really kind of hoses me up too um, and if you open this up there's not much in here I have pondered cutting a bunch of this away but it does have to be weather tight there's a seal in here basically there's an encoder up in here and then the rest of it is just empty space and so it's like wow man why isn't this thing smaller but anyways uh, I'll mock it up in the car and I'll show you what the problem is or what I'm trying to address and we'll go from there. Here you can see the issue with the cross shaft, right? So this is the, you know, the drilled hole in the oil pan, quarter inch drilled hole. And I'm blocking out the light here. And hard to, hard to film this. And then here's the rod coming out that's going through the oil pan. As you can see, it basically wants to go right through the rack and pinion. And this is only a quarter inch, you know, my reel tube is uh, at least an inch and three eighths in diameter, if not bigger. Uh, plus you have to have a bearing and a CV joint. So something has to happen. The, the rack has to move. And question is, can you do a simple rotate? Well, it actually hits the diff too. So it has to go forward and then rotate. And should it go above the cross tube or below? Um, there's pros and cons to each and that's my current mission is to figure all this out so I can fig finalize the oil pan and the bearing and the CV joint support and uh, move forward but uh, just wanted to kind of show the problem here and uh, what I need to address. 
In that last scene, uh, the rack and pinion was bolted to the stock mounts on the cross member. And I realized I needed a way to be able to rotate the rack to see, you know, should it go above or below the jack shaft and then slide it fore and aft in the car while keeping some resemblance of having it at the right elevation. And so I needed some something, some rails or datum structure for that. And so I think I have a pretty good solution and this next shot will kind of explain it. With the rack bolted in the stock location, I welded in these rails and used a digital level to keep them straight. So here you can kind of see what the idea is here, is basically now I can rotate the rack and slide it fore and aft and hopefully since I'm kind of using the OD of this seal, it should be concentric to the rack and pinion itself. Now obviously I'm changing the position and the potential angle relative to the, to the spindle but I think this is kind of the best I can do and worst case I'll have to shim it up and down once I make the new rack mounts but this should now allow me to at least play around with it a little bit easier and know I'm at least in the right general area of where it should be. Um, I may have to cut all of this original mount out. I, I already clearanced this one a little bit for the diff a little too aggressively actually the diff doesn't go quite that far but anyways um, so now I'll get it back in the car and with my rod going through the oil pan and my 3d printed parts I can really start to mock up how I can clear this kind of huge thing here in the, in the steering rod coming out that has to hook up to the to the uh, steering column here so anyways more good progress so, mock-up number 5,000 here. So here you can see, you know, here's the quarter-inch rod coming through the oil pan, um, blocking the light there. And then here is my th adjustable length, if you will, 3D printed bearing holder. And I, I'm going to adjust this length so that it's behind, you know, this bulbous section of the rack. And now you've seen I welded in these slides so I can adjust the rack back and forth and its angle right while at least attempting to keep the height correct for bump steer purposes right otherwise I was just kind of floating in space and didn't have a frame of reference and now I got a major decision here which affects the oil pan um, or at least how it interacts and it, that question is is do I put the steering above the, the jack shaft or below. And, you know, uh, up until a couple days ago or a week ago, I was assuming it would be above. Um, but it is kind of rather close to the motor mount. I might have to tweak that to clear. Um, and then if I, depending on how tight I make it to the jack shaft here, um, any rotation of the engine and or if I want to raise the engine to get better CV angles kind of becomes interactive if you will and so I've pondered going below you know but if I can see it in here uh, let me get a better light that I can't mock that up because to put it in the right spot to mock it up going below the rack is hitting basically in the remnants or the old rack mount on the cross member and so now I gotta make some soul searching and do I want to cut that off um, first time I mocked all this up going back almost two years ago I completely obliterated a cross member and I cut all that stuff off and then kinda realized I lost all my references um, so I'm a little hesitant to do that, but I don't see any other way. Now, unlike last time, I do have these rails, which should get me close and both side to side and front to back in my angle. And so I think that's the right call is to cut those off. Even if I have a go above, I probably got to cut them off to have enough meat right in here to be able to put a bolt through the new 
rack location. So it's going to happen eventually. So I might as well, I guess, do it now and, and make the judgment call and try to see if I can mock it up with the steering below, below the jack shaft. So now that I have the, you can see here, I basically butchered out the <laughs> the rack mount so I could rotate and play around a little bit more. Um, I think that is gonna be the right decision. As you can see here now, that I lower it down and the shaft can go above it. I'm trying to do this with one hand. Um, it really looks pretty elegant and um, I can't do everything simultaneously here, but the steering shaft lines up pretty good too, or pretty well. And I think this gets it closer, the pivot point of the rack to be closer to the original position than if I go up over the top. The other big advantage um, is that now I can bolt the rack to the cross member and move it up and down and install it without having to take the rack off every time. If the rack was went above the cross shaft, um, I have to unbolt the rack to drop the cross member. So there's all kinds of advantages and it looks like the control unit It's hard to see here on the back the Control unit is going to clear everything. It should clear the The sway bar. Um, what I'm going to do right now though is put the oil cooler back on and all that stuff And see how that clears and that's the next step but all this was really for just to make a decision on how this bearing support and where it is because I'm still just actually trying to focus on the oil pan but as this all is an interacting experience um, I gotta decide how far this comes out and this making a decision on this and mocking all this up uh, allows me to do that so anyways I'm gonna put the oil uh, cooler back in just to kinda get a visual and move on back to the oil pan well, that's a wrap on episode 19 of the all-wheel drive Mustang project. I actually forgot to get any footage of the oil filter and uh, oil cooler back in the car, but I did do that, and it all fits. Another good reason to have the rack and pinion be go, go below the jack shaft. It allows everything to be a little bit farther forward and really makes it elegant. So I'm glad I'm ca I came to that revelation. And now I can actually move on to making parts for the oil pan and modifying the oil pan and getting the diff modified. So I'm pretty excited about that. So once again, if you enjoy these videos, please like and subscribe. Hit the bell. Um, I know there's a, quite a few people that are subscribed and are not seeing the videos. So hit the bell so you get notified. But uh, I appreciate everybody watching and until next time. Mm -hmm.